Are love and authentic emotions always essential? Sadly, in today's society, this isn't always true. In the current era, love can even be purchased, but it's crucial to recognize that an individual who trades love lacks any ethical principles. Alongside this, they barter their spirit and subsequently yours, and continue their lives on the earnings with an untroubled mind. Paradise Island is the last location where one might anticipate any sort of dreadful offense. A devoted duo took residence in an opulent cabin to enjoy a holiday together, and a day afterward, one of them disappeared without a trace. The event we're discussing today took place on the enchanting island of Fangan, adorned with grand Buddhist shrines, mountains that capture the imagination, bustling thoroughfares, and pristine sandy shores. All of this is situated in the remarkable nation of Thailand. Owing to its vibrant culture, sumptuous cuisine, and diverse natural wonders, millions of tourists from across the globe visit Thailand annually. The island is often likened to Spain's Ibiza. The inhabitants of this nation are exceedingly serene and friendly, and indeed this location is dubbed the Land of Smiles. After a journey to Thailand, you will be left with an ocean of memories to cherish for a lifetime. Whether it's vibrant nights in the metropolis, treks in the mountains, unwinding on the beaches, or pursuing spiritual enlightenment, Further to the south, in the Gulf of Siam, resides the island of Fangan, home to merely 12,000 inhabitants and spanning an area of 48 square miles. A significant portion of it boasts spectacular beaches. Beyond the beaches, a multitude of restaurants and shops populate the town and its roads. This island is famed for its monthly full moon party, drawing in tens of thousands of visitors on each occasion. Revelers converge on the beaches to dance the night away sipping cocktails under the moon's glow. Electronic music fills the air across the town, with bars and eateries staying open till the break of dawn, and numerous attendees delay their sleep to experience this enchanting event. The celebration extends over three nights. This custom began in the 1970s when the island served merely as a waypoint for travelers en route from Thailand to India. The full moon party turned the tranquil hamlet into a bustling island metropolis. However, the aftermath of such intense partying and unbridled drinking is appalling, leaving behind a mess of food packaging, empty bottles, and even evidence of illicit substance use, such as syringes. These remnants litter the streets and beaches of Fangan, forcing the local community to address the aftermath of the nocturnal festivities. August 3, 2023, dawned as a typical day on the island. The previous night had seen yet another celebration in honor of the full moon. Some visitors were already savoring their morning coffee. Others were grappling with the after-effects of a severe hangover from the previous night's drinks, while some relished the crisp morning breeze. At 12.30 local time, a sanitation worker conducting his routine collection at the local landfill spotted something out of the ordinary. On a closer examination, he uncovered a peculiar fertilizer sack brimming with damp, decaying matter, initially resembling the remnants of a deceased animal discarded within. Yet a more detailed inspection left him visibly shocked. Enclosed within the sack were human body fragments. Subsequent investigations revealed he had stumbled upon a human pelvis and internal organs. The responding officers deduced that the remains could not have been of a local due to the large size of the body parts. This discovery was the beginning of a grim sequence, with fertilizer and garbage bags containing various human remains being found across the island by other inhabitants. In total, 14 bags were uncovered, spread out over a vast area. Initially uncertain whether they pertained to a single individual or multiple, the police, suspecting the victim was probably a tourist, acted swiftly. The local authorities promptly disseminated a cautionary notice amongst the island's populace. A thorough search of the same landfill later revealed another bag, this one containing human legs and articles of clothing. From these clues, it was inferred that the act had been committed roughly 36 hours earlier, based on the state of decomposition observed. Following DNA testing, Forensic experts identified the remains as belonging to an individual named Edwin Arrieta Arteaga. However, the specifics surrounding the victim's identity, 
the cause of his demise, and the reason his remains were dispersed across the island, remained unclear. Edwin Arieta Arteaga hailed from Santa Cruz del Islote in the northern region of Colombia. He grew up under the care of two devoted and prosperous parents. His father was employed as a technician fixing radios and televisions, while his mother, a retired educator, was a pillar in their community. Despite living apart, Edwin's mother frequently visited them until her untimely death at the age of 44. Edwin harbored aspirations of relocating overseas to pursue a career in surgery, dedicating himself to his university studies to attain a medical degree. After years of dedication, the burgeoning specialist relocated to Monteria, where he swiftly established himself as a distinguished plastic surgeon. Over a decade, he conducted hundreds of cosmetic procedures, becoming the surgeon of choice for many aspiring patients. Edwin was later inducted into the Colombian Society of Aesthetic and Reconstructive Plastic Surgery, a globally recognized body. With a following exceeding 35,000 on his personal and professional social media accounts, he achieved fame both domestically and internationally within the cosmetic surgery field. In December 2022, Edwin began exchanging messages with a young Spaniard from Madrid, Daniel Sancho Branchalo, who was nearly two decades his junior. Daniel was notably attractive, with sun-bleached long hair and a well-defined physique. Their correspondence quickly grew frequent, evolving from friendship to romance. The two exchanged a series of explicit photos and messages, and over time, Edwin's connection with Daniel deepened from casual interactions to a committed relationship. The surgeon started transferring substantial amounts of money to Sancho, exceeding 20,000 euros per month to support the establishment of his own eatery, along with offering him a credit card for unrestricted use. Their affair was kept under wraps, yet Edwin began envisioning a shared future with Daniel beyond Colombian borders. He schemed to inaugurate two clinics in Spain, specifically in the significant cities of Barcelona and Madrid, envisioning a life there with Daniel before potentially relocating to London or another locale. Edwin, a globetrotter at heart with a substantial financial reserve, never found traveling a hurdle. Indeed, he frequently ventured out of Colombia for a change of scenery. On this occasion, Daniel extended an invitation to him for a getaway in the scenic nation of Thailand, aiming for a secluded rendezvous away from their professional lives and intrusive eyes. A holiday in Thailand presented an ideal opportunity for a clandestine meeting, making it the chosen destination. They arranged their stay at a hotel from July 31st to August 3rd, perfectly timing it with the full moon party. On August 1st, 2023, their paths crossed on the island of Fangan, where Daniel proposed they revel in the famed celebration and enjoy moments of privacy. Branchalo had arrived a day earlier, on July 31st, greeting Arteaga at the airport and escorting him to their accommodations at the Had Salad Villa Resort in a sumptuously appointed bungalow secured for their visit. It appeared both men were overjoyed at their reunion, eagerly anticipating the quality time they would share in each other's company. Daniel Sancho Branchalo entered the world on June 11, 1994, as the eldest son of the renowned Spanish actors Rodolfo Sancho Aguirre and Silvia Branchalo. Their paths crossed during acting classes, leading to Daniel's birth when they were merely 19 and 18 years old, respectively. The duo remained together for a little over a decade before deciding to part ways amicably. Daniel was raised by his father in a family where public attention was the norm, affording him a life of considerable ease and leisure. Known for his cheerful demeanor and athletic prowess, Sancho was fond of engaging in sports like tennis and surfing. Despite his lineage's prominence in the entertainment sphere, he chose to pursue a passion for culinary arts and hospitality. Working for the upscale catering firm Labum, Daniel's professional endeavors, though passionate, fell short of yielding the financial rewards he sought, earning him merely a fraction of what his family members made. Inherited wealth led Sancho to a lifestyle characterized by extravagant spending on fine dining, private jetting, and opulent travels. He frequently flaunted this lifestyle on social media, expressing his love for gastronomy, surfing, and global adventures. Yet, contrary to expectations, 
his public persona attracted minimal media spotlight. His social media presence barely garnered interest, and his YouTube channel, despite showcasing high-quality culinary videos produced with pricey equipment, struggled to amass a significant following, not even reaching a thousand subscribers. Despite his famous familial background, Daniel's public recognition was surprisingly modest. A lover of travel, nightlife, exceptional cuisine, and surfing, Thailand ranked among his top destinations, making it an ideal setting for time spent with Edwin. Daniel and Arteaga's relationship spanned approximately a year, during which Daniel maintained a concurrent, long-standing relationship with a Spanish woman for five years, with plans for future matrimony. This parallel life remained hidden, just as Edwin remained unaware of his unwitting competition. Arieta set foot on the island on Tuesday, August 1st, and his family was aware that he had planned a getaway with his boyfriend, Daniel. As time elapsed without any communication from Edwin since his arrival on Fangan Island, his family's concern escalated. This break in communication was out of character for Edwin, who typically maintained regular contact during his travels. Aware of his relationship with Daniel, Edwin's sister reached out to him via social media to inquire about her brother's unusual silence. Daniel expressed his own concerns, stating that he had planned to meet Arietta on August 1st but hadn't been able to. Edwin's sister persuaded Daniel to report her brother missing to the authorities. Daniel agreed, mentioning he'd go to the police after taking a shower. Eventually, albeit hesitantly, he adhered to her suggestion and approached the police, where the officers noted several scratches and cuts on his face and hands. Given the recent discovery of dismembered body parts across the island, Daniel's appearance raised suspicions, prompting the police to detain him for further investigation and to conduct a search of his bungalow. At first glance, the bungalow was in pristine condition, with a spotless bathroom, kitchen, and bedroom. However, a more thorough search by forensic experts unveiled disturbing evidence. The drainage system was blocked with human hair and a substance that seemed to be human tissue, particularly fatty tissue. A quick DNA test confirmed the gravest fears. It was evident that a severe ordeal had occurred in the bungalow, and the authorities braced themselves to unravel the extent of the dreadful events that transpired in that seemingly luxurious space. As a segment of the police force scrutinized the bungalow for evidence, their counterparts were conducting an interrogation of Daniel at the station. Initially, Daniel vehemently denied any involvement in Edwin's disappearance, asserting that he had only arrived on Fangan Island on August 2nd. This claim was easily disputable, given the island's surveillance infrastructure and the hotel's ability to confirm the actual date of his check-in, rendering his statement imprudent. Confronted with the evidence uncovered, Daniel's account took a dramatic turn. He began recounting the events, portraying the outset of their holiday as idyllic. Following a scooter journey from the airport, they savored their time on the island, enjoying a meal at a local eatery, engaging in deep conversations, and discussing their aspirations for the future. As evening descended and the island's nightlife began to pulse with energy from the hotels, clubs, and throngs of revelers heading to the beaches for celebrations, the couple opted out of the festivities. Despite the pervasive ambiance of joy and the electric vibrancy that characterized Fangan during the festival, an altercation broke out between Daniel and Edwin. This quarrel marred their first night on the island, despite the otherwise positive start to their vacation together. 29-year-old Sancho felt cornered within the relationship, burdened by financial indebtedness and the psychological influence the 44-year-old man wielded over him. Daniel contended that Edwin's demands for physical affection became too forceful, pushing the younger man towards unwanted intimacy. The tension between them intensified, culminating in a physical confrontation. During the dispute, Sancho struck Arieta in the face and shoved him into the bathroom, where Edwin hit his head and fell unconscious. In a state of panic and desperate to revive him, Daniel doused his lover with water from a pitcher to no avail. It dawned on him that the impact had been fatal. In a bewildering turn of actions, Daniel then fatally stabbed Edwin twice in the chest and slit his throat. Following this, 
He dismembered Edwin's body into 14 pieces using two knives and a saw, scattering the remains across the island. He also disposed of Arietta's personal effects, including his mobile phone, yet retained $9,000 in cash. Subsequently, Daniel guided the police to the various sites where he had discarded the bags containing pieces of his lover's body. All of these actions were carried out within a day of Edwin's arrival on the island. Portions of the remains were cast into the sea after Sancho took out a kayak, as evidenced by shop receipts and staff testimonies, describing a visibly disturbed and tense young man who came in just after 9 p.m., denied the chance to rent a kayak at such a late hour. He utilized Arietta's funds to propose $1,000 for the purchase of a boat. His persistence ultimately convinced the employees to acquiesce. Having acquired the kayak, Daniel took Edwin's hefty suitcase, filled with his personal items and remains, and ventured into the bay. He jettisoned everything into the sea and afterwards, en route back to his lodging, encountered two women and joined them at a full moon celebration. The young man immersed himself in the festivities as though nothing was amiss, endeavoring to establish a watertight alibi. After reveling in the boisterous music and the tumult, Sancho made his way back to his bungalow and retired to bed disregarding the fact that parts of Edwin's body were still in the adjacent room. Despite the evening's events, Sancho managed to find rest, his demeanor so impassive that he could sleep soundly with his departed companion just a short distance away. The following day, he rose early and roamed the island, dispersing bags filled with the ghastly contents in various locales. He departed the villa early Thursday morning, moments before the discovery of the first bag at the refuse site. In their quest to understand the motive for the crime, the authorities interrogated Daniel about his association with Edwin. His response was surprisingly candid. While he admitted to the murder, he refuted any suggestions of an intimate or romantic connection with Arietta. He alleged that the surgeon had misled him with promises of financial investment in a business where Sancho was a stakeholder, intending to engage in commercial dealings. However, Arietta's actual motive, according to Daniel, was to persuade him into a romantic partnership. This revelation left the investigators perplexed, particularly regarding their decision to share a single room if there was no romantic involvement. Daniel, hailing from a lineage of actors, possibly saw this as an opportunity to showcase his inherited skills. He also expressed feeling trapped in his dealings with Arietta, maintaining that despite attempts to sever ties over several months, Arietta's threats and blackmail over a potential scandal prevented him. Daniel depicted their trip to Thailand as a holiday for a couple, though his real intention was to end their association. He firmly dismissed any suggestions about his sexual orientation being anything other than heterosexual. He had plans to wed a woman from Spain in the near future, a development that reportedly enraged Arietta, culminating in a fierce altercation that led to Edwin's premature demise. The exact cause of Arietta's death remains ambiguous, whether it was a fall against the bathtub or a fatal stab wound. Had Sancho not resorted to using the knife, it's conceivable that Edwin might have survived to pursue his aspirations. Nevertheless, the potential scandal surrounding his alleged non-heterosexual orientation, combined with his engagement, renowned family, and the risk of tarnishing his public persona as well as losing financial support from relatives, overshadowed his actions. Contrary to Daniel's assertion of a spontaneous act, the investigation uncovered proof of premeditation. Security camera recordings from the day before Edwin was collected from the airport showed Sancho acquiring knives, latex gloves, plastic bags, and cleaning supplies at a nearby store, items that were later used to eradicate any evidence of the crime in the room. Subsequently, Divers retrieved Edwin's head and hands from the bay, along with his clothes, comprising boxer briefs and a black t-shirt, all stuffed into a suitcase. On August 15, 2023, police chief Sent Hokan declared the investigation into Daniel Sancho as concluded. The motive behind the murder was identified as Sancho's desire to completely remove Edwin from his life, enabling him to wed his fiancée devoid of any hidden truths. Daniel aimed to conceal aspects of his personal life from his future spouse and retain the financial contributions Arietta had been making to his venture, 
leading him to concoct a drastic solution to eliminate both dilemmas simultaneously. The accumulation of evidence was sufficient to indict him for first-degree murder, a crime that in Thailand can result in capital punishment via lethal injection. Although the execution process is not immediate, allowing the convicted individual to pursue several appeals, these efforts typically only delay the execution by two to three years. This is one of the worst and most notorious incidents involving foreigners in the history of the country. When news of the situation reached Daniel's parents, his father, Rodolfo Sancho Aguirre, wasted no time in traveling to Thailand, accompanied by the renowned attorney Marcos Garcia Montes, who, despite his reputation, was not legally permitted to lead the defense in Thailand. A local attorney, Kun Anan, had already been assigned to Daniel's case. However, upon their arrival, Montes's disagreement with the strategies of the local legal representative and his critique of Thai legal practitioners led Kun Anan to withdraw from the case. Consequently, the Sancho family found themselves in urgent need of securing another competent Thai lawyer for Daniel amidst a highly complex legal scenario and the intricacies of the Thai judicial system. The local law enforcement clarified that Daniel would face charges for intentional homicide and for clandestinely disposing of the body to obscure the cause of death. As of now, there is no scheduled start date for Daniel Sancho's trial, with his fate precariously uncertain. His family remains hopeful that the defense team will employ every available strategy to safeguard his life. However, the task appears daunting in light of the overwhelming forensic evidence, eyewitness accounts, video surveillance material, and Daniel's own admission of guilt. Daniel Sancho is currently detained in a Thai correctional facility on Samui Island, closely monitored as he awaits trial, with both his legal representatives and the prosecution diligently preparing their arguments. The authorities are particularly vigilant regarding Sancho's well-being, given his apparent high levels of stress and concerns about his psychological state. Despite these concerns, they maintain that it's imperative for him to face the consequences of his actions in court rather than evading them through suicide. The shocking nature of the crime has captured the attention and elicited strong reactions from people in Colombia, Spain, and Thailand. The public sentiment is starkly divided. In Colombia, Edwin's professional peers, patients, friends, and family members remember him as a top-tier surgeon and a genuinely good individual. They argue that Daniel's portrayal of Edwin as a manipulative blackmailer is a desperate attempt to justify his actions. Conversely, some individuals express empathy towards the 29-year-old Sancho, suggesting that he was coerced into violence by Edwin. Regardless of the varied perspectives, this case has garnered international attention, leaving audiences worldwide eagerly anticipating the commencement of Daniel Sancho Branchalo's trial. This is the end of the story. Like the video and leave your thoughts in the comments. This was Jeremy. See you soon.